Good morning. And I mean, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. I mean, Susanna, excellencies and colleagues, I'm extremely pleased to be here. Indeed, it's my first time and I'm very, very impressed uh, by this uh, audience and by the work which is going here. And it's extremely interesting. Um, I mean, for us, you know, the uh, World Health Organization and Regional Committee for Europe is crucial. And every meeting is crucial. And some are more crucial than others. And I think this one is. And this one is for a very good reason, is that both the, in the WHO for Europe and in the European Union, we're in a transition phase. And I want, I mean, really to use this moment to really thank Susanna Jacob for all the work she has been doing, all the energy and uh, all the uh, strategic vision she has brought to the region during these 10 years. And I really uh, also congratulate Hans Kruger uh, for his appointment. And I think we're going to have also very interesting time looking forward. I'm, I mean, I look to this uh, productive partnership. On the side of the European Union, you know that we are also going for a new mandate now. And the president-elect, Ursula von der Leyen, has made a lot of announcement and she has designated uh, Commissioner Stella Kikiriakides as the health commissioner and with a very ambitious letter. And this new health commissioner is a doctor and she has huge experience in, uh, in, in policy making and also in health advocacy. And she will be uh, really taking full responsibility for a number of, of topics. And I'm sure she will build on the cooperation which has been established by Susanna and by Commissioner Andriokaitis. And we will prepare the change in the mandates in the months to come. I mean, for me, the partnership uh, between the uh, Commission and WHO is very, very important and very strategic. Because basically, we share the same policy framework. We share the same goals. We all work under the UN 2030 agenda, and we have shared responsibility in particular for the, for the specific goal three on health and well-being. And secondly, we are complementary in our roles, so we can really reinforce each other. And if you look at the, 20, the 2015 Vilnius Declaration, it has established a lot of mechanisms to coordinate and cooperate. And this has been extremely useful. And it, it, is, uh, it has outlined common priorities, uh, but also ways of working better together on a daily basis. And it would be very, very difficult for me now to go through all the things which have happened under the umbrella of this declaration. But because, I mean, there were numerous topics and different ways of interacting which have been uh, uh, put in place. But I think it's quite important maybe that we look at a couple of topics where the cooperation has been very good and which I mean, are topics which, will, which are very relevant for our future. And I have selected to maybe have a word on crisis preparedness, uh, uh, antimicrobial resistance, uh, cancer, uh, inequalities, and maybe last word on pricing. On crisis preparedness, I mean, this is core business of the two institutions, and it's the base of our collaborations. And I mean, we all aim at full implementation of the international health regulations. At the European level, we have our legislation, which is on the cross-border health threats. And this is a framework which allows us to boost preparedness, to strengthen uh, surveillance and monitoring, and also to improve response to health emergencies. And we have regular communication and coordination within the EU Health Security Committee. I mean, lots of you know it. It's a high-level uh, body for preparedness and responses to health emergencies. It involves member states. It involves international organizations, and especially WHO. And, I mean, we have cooperated over the years, now, but we are never prepared enough, and we still need to improve the way it works. And I have to highlight that recently we made a number of improvements. Uh, the early warning and response system for notifying serious cross-border health has been revamped. 
it has been made more responsive. It is now more connected to other alert systems. Uh, we also have earlier this year uh, organized joint public procurement for pandemic flu vaccines and 14 EU member states have uh, jointly signed a framework agreement for this purpose. And it's quite important because it uh, allows to have a joint action, coordinated action on vaccination, um, which is extremely high on our agenda. Some of you might have attended last week vaccination global summit, which we jointly organized with the WHO. Um, the summit has shown again that when we pull forces together, we can have a lot of impact and we can reach out to important decision makers and stakeholders. So I have no doubt that we will continue our efforts on vaccination in the future because it's, it's very high on agenda of both uh, institutions and we can not rest in this area on our laurels. I mean, we urgently need to uh, prioritize communication on vaccination. We need to explain the benefits. We need to combat myth and skepticism and we need to have a definite impact on uh, higher vaccine coverage and make sure that uh, vaccine hesitancy becomes history. The second topic I wanted to discuss is uh, antimicrobial resistance. Uh, rising levels of antimicrobial resistance are really uh, threats to our health and health systems. They present a big risk to the, um, to the health security of our nations. If you take the EU right now, on average, per day, 100 people die of resistant infections. And half of these deaths could be avoided. And bacteria, they, they know no borders. They, do not, they ignore differences in geography, culture, and language. This has to be a global fight. And I mean, in this context, we are extremely grateful to the WHO for its leadership. We are very grateful for the efforts to implement the Global Action Plan on AMR. And for the European Commission, it's also one of our top priority. Our objective is to be one of the best practice regions globally. And uh, we, have, we are implementing our European One Health Action Plan against AMR, which is fully aligned with the uh, Global Action Plan and the WHO, WHO European strategy. We already enjoy excellent cooperation, uh, cooperation with the WHO European office and with the member states, and we will continue to work closely with all our partners in Europe on this topic. And if you have uh, looked at the announcement of our president-elect Ursula von der Leyen, you have seen that she has highlighted AMR as one of our biggest challenges, which requires a global response. So. She has also highlighted commitments on AMR, which could lead to a potential global agreement. Cancer is another topic which is, uh, on, for which we have really a, a long track record of cooperation with the WHO. I mean, this goes back 35 years ago when we had the first Europe Against Cancer Action Plan. And the collaboration continues today and very, very much again uh, aligned. Just take one example, the uh, guidelines for cancer screening, uh, which have been recently published, or look at the 2000 report for the, from the International Agency for Research on Cancer, which was looking at the implementation of the uh, European recommendation on breast, cervical, and col colorectal cancer screening. And this report highlights how Pro, how much progress has been made in national screen, screening plans. But of course, we, still, we need much more effort for uh, recovering the whole target populations in the EU and, and, and in the European region. So looking ahead for us, the years, supporting the national planning on cancer is certainly an area where the Commission will work together with the WHO regional office and cooperate even more than before. So I can also assure you that uh, cancer will remain a high priority. And I can, again, for this, ref refer to the uh, now political announcement of, an, of our new president-elect, who said that uh, we, the European Union should put forward a European plan to beat cancer. And 
I mean, this will be an important initiative in the months to come. And this will be another opportunity for, uh, to deepen the cooperation in this field with our colleagues of the WHO. I also want uh, to take the opportunity to highlight the recent WHO initiative against cervical cancer and the promotion of the elimination of the human papilloma virus back vaccination. Once again, I mean, this is an area where vaccination has a role to play and uh, where, we, where we can really support joint initiatives in this area to improve cancer prevention. Let me come to health inequalities. Um, I welcome the focus of the uh, WHO Regional Office for Europe on greater equity in health. This is a very important topic at the uh, European level, and I'm glad to see that uh, this topic is again on today's agenda meet of the meeting. And the Commission's approach to integrate health inequality dimension in all activities it has now been strengthened. Let me take, for instance, um, some criteria on this. We have, uh, when we select uh, best practices in the EU on non-communicable diseases, one of the criteria we, ha we have to select the best practices is the extent to which the practice contribute to reduce inequalities. So together with the WHO, we have also worked in the area of uh, improving the health status of refugees and migrants, which is an important dimension of inequalities because they are really an important population at risk of lower health. Health literacy is also an important dimension of health inequalities. And in that framework, we recognize that the Migration and Health Knowledge Management Project was well implemented by the WHO Regional Office for Europe. And this was done in the collaboration with the Commission. So this is also one area where raising awareness, fostering and disseminating knowledge and increasing adoption of migrant health good practices really helps for uh, reducing inequalities. And women's health is also another dimension of the issue with which we have also joint activities. A final word, as I said, on pricing. Um, I mean, this, uh, we, we have a lot of discussion across the, the Union and also globally on availability access and affordability of medicines. And the, the organization of delivering health systems, and in particular the issue of pricing and reimbursement of, of um, treatment, are issues which are at national competence. It doesn't mean there's no EU dimension in the debate. Uh, the, pharmaceutical, the pharmaceutical sector, for instance, is subject to competition rules. Uh, which are set at the EU level. So it is subject to the rules on unfair pricing by dominant undertakings. We also have a whole legislative, uh, a whole legislative body uh, with uh, legislations ruling uh, market access uh, or um, incentives, um, intellectual property rights or transparency rules. So there is an increasing appetite at the European level to review to what extent the rules which we have, uh, the, the policy tools at the EU level can help the debate and uh, can improve transparency and incentives at the EU level. So we are part of that debate on the access and affordability and uh, ongoing collaboration between the Commission and the WHO in this area is crucial to understanding the topics that influence access and uh, sustainability uh, of medicines and in particular of the health and, and of the healthcare systems at home. So ladies and gentlemen, as I have said, our collaboration with the WHO covers quite a lot of topics. It delivers a lot of benefits to the member states and it allows us a lot of cooperation also beyond the EU. And I'm very excited by this time of change. As I said, it's a period of transition. Uh, transition brings new ideas, it brings creativity, it brings energy. And I think uh, we will have to use this momentum. Uh, Susanna has shown the, showed us the way. 
And I really, again, would like to uh, congratulate her for all the success in the new co cooperation and partnership she has established with the European Union. And we know that progress is, not, is impossible without a bit of change, and she has initiated this change and given us the mission to continue. So thank you very much, and rely on us for continued partnership. Thank you.